All right, so that's a big matchup next week, Ole Miss and Alabama. But Arkansas in a big matchup of its own, Barrett, facing Georgia on the road after a win like this. But when you take a look at this victory, what a confidence boost for the Razorbacks and specifically Sam Pittman that now says, hey, we, I know we beat Texas, but we have arrived beating a ranked Texas A&M squad. Yeah, in a game that, that means so much to that fan base because he's feeling it this week, not only because of the pressure generated from the first three games, but this is an old Southwestern Conference rivalry. It means an awful lot to those fans in that administration. And for Sam Pittman, I think the fact that his players played with heart, they played with toughness, they played to win in the trenches, which is what he shot, set out to do when he got that job. And the fact that K.J. Jefferson got hurt, came out of the game, came back in and led them to a win. I mean, look, that's Sam Pittman personified, right? That's the yes, sir that he always talks about that's the group that he has created they play together they play for each other and for them to find a way to get this done against the Texas A&M defense that you we talked about it at halftime was the best passing defense in the country by pretty much every metric you can possibly find uh, just a huge win for Sam Pittman a huge win for Arkansas and it's proof that yeah they've arrived not only did they win a huge game against a really good opponent they did it with a ton of adversity. And for a team like Arkansas that really has not been in a situation like this for over a half decade in terms of being relevant in the SEC West, uh, it's huge going into, obviously, uh, the biggest game of Sam Pittman's career next week. Yeah, you talk about next week's matchup. I was a bit concerned, and I think I, I questioned Sam Pittman's decision to put K.J. Jefferson back in the ball game. I mean, when he went out, it looked like it was a very, very significant injury. And then you put him back in the ball game. Clearly, I know it was some time left on the clock, but ain't them having no timeouts, guys. I'm like, you know, bringing him in and he's running the football. You got to understand what's next. I mean, you got to understand you just took care of your business against Arkansas. You're not going to sleep up on a UGA. They're going to take you extremely seriously. And based on how you playing, they should. So you want to make sure your quarterback is as healthy as possible. But they got through. He got through. You have some in injury concerns to your wide receiver, Burks. Uh, he went to the locker room. But in all, this is a huge win for, for Arkansas. Uh, but when you're playing in the SEC, you only can celebrate these type of victories maybe for a day. And now it's, all t it's, it's time to get right back to work because you, now you have another playoff championship-like team uh, coming your way. Or I'm sorry, I think they traveled to Athens, if I'm not mistaken. So that's going to make it even mo that much more of a difficult task going to Athens to play against the Bulldogs. Yeah, that game is on the road in Georgia. Uh, and Arkansas uh, go comes in with a 4-0 record, as does Georgia. Uh, BMAC, before we stray away from what happened in this game and what happens with K.J. Jefferson going forward, he comes back, shows the toughness. You said pregame. The college football world will be talking about K.J. Jefferson after this game. What are they going to be saying? He's a baller. He's a big physical, physical quarterback that has a running back tight end like body. And he doesn't mind laying on you. I'm just mad that he didn't get a chance to really play the entire second half. He went into halftime over 200 yards. I mean, I easily felt like he had another 150 left when you look at throwing the football and running the football as well. But in all in all, one thing I can tell you about KJ, I don't know him personally, but I know his heart is extremely big. For him to come back into that ball game, even though I question that decision, and to put the team on his back and seal the deal tells you he loves football and he plays with a big heart. And that will take him far in life, not just in football in general, but in life. So I love what he's been able to do. Uh, he, he, he proved me halfway right because that unexpected injury showed up. But I was high on him. I, I watched him throughout the entire season so far. When you're looking at playing against Texas, uh, you're looking at what he did against uh, Rice, and, uh, and uh, I can't remember the other team that they played against, but he's a guy that plays with a lot of energy and passion. And the entire ball club, they, they, they adapted the same personality of their head coach. And I love that. When you look at big-time head coaches, you look at their personality, you can see their personality just sprinkled throughout their ball club, and that's what Pippen has been able to do. Arkansas has a quarterback, K.J. Jefferson. Barrett, does Texas A&M have a quarterback? No, they don't. It's not Zach Calzada. And honestly, I was skeptical about Haynes King going into the season. And obviously, he's going to be out for a little while. Hopefully, they get him back by mid-October. But what we saw from Haynes King, we didn't see that much of a, of a difference maker either. Now, obviously, he can run around a little bit. So, like with an offensive line that's been a little sketchy at times, that would certainly help. But no, Texas A&M does not have a quarterback. And look, that's kind of why going into the season, I was skeptical on the Texas A&M 
tight because it takes a quarterback a long time to get comfortable in the Jimbo Fisher system. Kellen Mond, I think we will look back and think, wow, we really didn't appreciate that guy all that as much as we probably should have. So, you know, they've got a massive problem. Offensive line, not there where it needs to be. Quarterback play, very complicated system. Those two things don't work well together. So Texas A&M right now, it's an above average SEC West team, but is it a championship caliber team? Absolutely not obviously Arkansas is better Ole Miss certainly better and we know what Alabama is so it's a problem it was just a bad recipe going into the season from a personnel standpoint from Texas A&M and the area to Haynes King didn't help matters so no they're in a tough spot there's no doubt yeah I mean when you don't have a quarterback the field is 150 yards it's not 100 it's 150 and we saw that today for A&M and now seeing that there there are a few holes on their defensive side I mean, you don't know exactly what's next because you're playing in the SEC. The next week, they have uh, Mississippi State, who play LSU pretty tough today. And then you got Alabama, you got Missouri, and then you got the rest of your, your SEC schedule. So will he improve is the biggest question. And how soon will these improvements happen? Because if you don't have a quarterback, I don't care how good your defense is. It's going to wear your defense down, and they will become a bit average. And what we saw in today's matchup, a and outstanding, heralded defense looked to be a bit average, and they were exploited a lot via Arkansas. So me personally, don't have a quarterback, but when you don't have a quarterback, that is an extra 50 yards to get to the end zone. Arkansas pulls off the upset. You know who picked it? BMAC. Moneyline Sprinkle, Josh Pate picked it, Emory Jones picked it, Todd Furman had the under. All of our experts on Arkansas, on the under, knowledge in your mind, money in your pocket. Speaking of upsets, a massive upset coming up in college football. Clemson goes down against NC State. We'll break it down when we return here on the SEC on CBS Postgame Report. But hey, you want some more awesome content from BMAC? Check out all things covered with former LSU star and Vikings corner Patrick Peterson. They're in a must-win situation on Sunday. Entertaining and engaging as they talk to some of the biggest names about the sports and entertainment worlds. All things covered. Download and subscribe today. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.